Welcome everybody. Glad to be back. <laughs> We're gonna have uh, Joey teach tonight. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Joey's the backup backup. <laughs> All right. Well, a um, couple announcements. Uh, of course, if you got our text message, great. If you don't, if we don't have you on our text thread, please give me your phone number afterwards. Uh, Joey and Danielle uh, mainly. So <laughs> just realized I don't have their phone number. So. Um, of course, the big thing is if you if you plan to attend uh, May 29th Memorial Day, the Barn Castles along with Mark Hughes is do uh, they're doing a big uh, barbecue Memorial Day uh, picnic at their house, and uh, they need a head count. They're doing brisket. What else are you doing? Ribs. Ribs. Oh my goodness! All that good stuff. All smoked, smoked ribs, pulled pork. Uh, did I hear brisket? Yes, I heard brisket. Oh my goodness. And then, of course, uh, if you, uh, you're bringing a side, let them know because, you know, there's multiple sides. So it's going to be a fun time. Uh, that's Memorial Day. We'll have church this Sunday. And, um, of course, the following week is Memorial Weekend. And Sunday night we will not have service because many are out of town. Uh, this next coming Thursday, a week from today. And I'll, I'll send a text, I know, because you can get lost in uh, speaking it, um, I learned. Uh, we will not have a Bible study because for two reasons. One, this was already reserved with another group or not so much a church group, maybe baby shower or something like that. I don't know. But uh, many of us will be at junior camp. And so please pray for the children. We have a record number of um, campers coming. It's getting closer to 300. So uh, security, Mark Hughes and Lane Barncastle have their work cut out. Uh, the good thing is the kids are not usually ones that sneak out. In fact, my son Aaron, who's 10 years old and He's going to be staying in Brother Hughes's cabin. He goes, can we sneak out? <laughs> you asked the wrong guy. He's part of security. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, it's a fun time. They have laser tag, swimming pool. We bring all kinds of stuff in there. More importantly, the children feel the touch of God. Many get filled with the Holy Ghost and refilled. And we want them to be refilled. You know, I'm going to be a broken record, but, you know, and not to be drastic, but the world is not waiting for them to be 13 years old to influence them. They're, they're going to abuse them at eight years old, four years old. Uh, they're going to, the drug pusher's not waiting. And I'm not being drastic, it's just reality. And so we have a safe environment. I know we're raised in church, most of us. Uh, some of us not, so we understand that. Um, and I see these children uh, every year at camp, and you just get a sense of, you know that this is a week of peace, five days of peace, but then when they go home, that they're going to face that, that, that battle again. And so we appreciate uh, your prayers, uh, appreciate your giving. There's been some that have given uh, sponsored campers, and, and that's wonderful. I would like to, again, uh, we will have some that are attached to your Marana going to senior camp, and I would like to you know, raise some funds if you feel to do so, and we'll talk more about that uh, so we can sponsor some of our teenagers as well. That'll be in June. Uh, so we'll be up there. And then, of course, um, you know, we'll just have some good church up there and we'll live stream it. Amen. Praise God. We're going to pray tonight. Uh, I'm asking you to pray for the camp. Let's pray for the Bible study. Let's continue to pray for Sister Darlene. Uh, she's going. Uh, it's a roller coaster still. Her faith is high. And, of course, there's some days uh, her faith isn't as high. And that's just normal. Uh, she's already begun the cancer treatments. Mrs. Bean here. And, of course, uh, it's taken a toll on her physically, mentally, financially. Uh, but we know a God. We know a God that we serve, and he can do some marvelous things. And he has and will continue to do so. Amen? And so let's pray for that. Any other prayer requests tonight? If not, we just pray for Sister Darlene and pray for the Bible study and the kids. I'm going to step out. I'm going to teach the, the young people tonight and go back to my old roots. So, all right. Lord, in your precious name, we come before you asking you, God, that you would anoint this Bible study, this teaching, this lesson. We know that your spirit is with us tonight. Give us revelation, understanding. We're asking you, Father, in your precious name, touch the youth class, touch the children's class. Uh, we're praying, God, that you bless that with revelation and understanding that the seeds of your word go forth, God, and plant into those children and teenagers. Uh, we're asking you, God, touch Sister Darlene. We pray in the name of Jesus, uh, bring healing in her body, bring strength, oh God, uh, renew her faith, God. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. We pray that you would touch the junior camp this week, the children that are coming from Moran and those uh, all over the state, that you would fill them with your presence. Uh, let them hear your voice, oh God, and refill them and touch them. In Jesus' name, let it be a safe trip. 
a relaxing and rewarding trip spiritually in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. He's awesome, and that song didn't mention it, but his name is Jesus, and we know his name. We don't have to talk about the God way out there. He's given us his name, and we, we talked about that last week, and I think there's enough to say about his name that I'm going to do a part two on his name. So um, we'll start off with the first scripture, uh, Matthew 1, 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And just a little review of last week for anybody that wasn't here. Um, Jesus is uh, YHWH, the Tetragrammaton, combined with salvation. So it's God's name from the Old Testament that he gave Moses, combined with salvation, to become 
Jehoshua or Jehovah become our salvation or reduced to Jesus in English. Um, we looked at it from Genesis 1.1. The Reyes weren't here. I don't know if you saw the video. If you didn't, uh, real quick review. Oh, also Frank, so it's family. Um, the very first uh, verse of the Bible, Genesis 1.1, they called God Elohim, uh, grand male uh, word, and that's all they had. And then when Moses uh, met the God at the burning bush, he said, what's your name? And God said, I am that I am, Ehe, Asher Ehe. And Ehe is I am in the first tense, in the present tense, or first uh, person. Uh, Moses wouldn't go back and say, I am, to the people. He would go back and say, Yahweh, Asher, uh, Yahweh. And that's where we get Yahweh. Um, the Jews didn't want to uh, uh, speak God's name in vain. So they took the letters out and left YHWH, the Tetragrammaton. And they put that in their scripture so that when they got to that, they wouldn't say the word, just to be careful not to uh, break the third commandment, thus not take the Lord's name in vain. Uh, after a while, um, again, theory goes is that they forgot what it really meant or what it really sounded like. And uh, they had used the word Adonai for God. And... They put it together with the vowels from Adonai and the YHWH and gave, came up with uh, Y-A-H-O-W-A-H, and that Anglicized becomes Jehovah. And when you see Lord in the Old Testament with capital letters, it's Jehovah. And when you see it with a small letters, it's Adonai. And uh, so that's the that's what we, we covered last week and, and a lot more. So we're going to, you know, we stopped at that Yahweh became salvation. We didn't go too far into the New Testament. So that's what I want to do today is uh, how, do we, how do we deal with God's name in the New Testament now that he's been introduced. Again, Matthew 1, it's, his name is Jesus, and Genesis 1, it was Elohim, and then so on. So uh, this is going to be kind of a hodgepodge of thoughts. Uh, I could not, and I, I was telling my daughter, I can't seem to make a, an outline for we'll first we'll say this and then this and then this. So within this may be some some interesting things. Um, also, the scriptures themselves do the preaching to us. So we'll, we'll read quite a few scriptures. So we'll start out here randomly casting out devils in Jesus name. Kind of a weird start, but uh, we got to get started somewhere. So in Mark, remember Mark? Mark is the book of authority, the book of, uh, you know, I'm a centurion, I know how to obey orders. It's, it's that kind of book of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So uh, it, it's fitting that it's talking about casting out devils in Jesus' name. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, speaking to Jesus. And he followed not us, and we forbade him because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. And what I want to bring out is that is even then there were people going out and branching out from the apostles, branching away from Jesus, but trying to use his name to cast out devils. And one thing I just want to say is, we as a church, Christian church, we don't need to oppose those that are not with us. Those people that are Christians and are not in this room, we could, you know, go out and forbade them and tell them how bad they are and how they don't know and all of this. But we don't, Jesus doesn't want us to do that. It's great that they're telling about Jesus at all. And he will bring in those that are hungry. So we don't need to oppose those, even though we'd like to. We'd like to prove it to them by the Bible how they should be. But uh, we don't want to be like the apostles were here forbidding them and, and opposing them. Now, he's, I'm going to go through several warnings before we get to some of the good stuff. Um, the same kind of thing is happening here. Luke is recording. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan. I don't have the rest of this in my notes. Let me read it here. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. 
Behold, I do give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So the apostles were sent out, and they, were, they had the power in Jesus' name. It's always there, through thy name to cast out devils, and devils were subject to them. They had power. They, uh, they had the ability to affect the, the spiritual world. But they were rejoicing, and Jesus was, again, just re redirecting us as, you know, we just get to one point, and then we realize that we're, we're, we're making a mistake here. So we're all happy to cast out devils, and he's saying, don't be rejoicing in that. Rejoice is that your name is written in, the, in, the, uh, written in heaven. So, Again, a warning about uh, the power of the name of Jesus. There's something more important, and that is that you all, all of us are in uh, the book of, of life. Another warning is uh, it's not a, a magic formula, the use of the name of the Lord. And this is a wonderful story, Acts 19. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. So here you got some, some Jews, and actually one of them was a chief priest, that were using the name of Jesus because they, they believed. They believed that that would work and that they could cast out devils. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on all of them. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. So God turned something bad into something good that people believed his name was magnified, uh, People confessed, and and uh, it, it turned this whole situation into something good. Uh, the thing is, is that these people believed. And I, I just want to remind us of a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about this belief and faith. And I had, I had, had uh, where is he? I had him sit, uh, Lane sit in a chair, but without being able to look at it. And he believed that I was a good guy, and he sat down, and the chair was there, and he, everything was safe. Well, these people believed in the name of the Lord, and that it could, Jesus, and that it could cast out Satan. They believed that, but they weren't right with God. So it's possible, and there are people outside these walls that believe in Jesus, but are in the same situation they are. They, they don't have faith, they have belief. And as Brother Lopez preached four weeks ago, uh, faith is action. I mean, it's one thing to say, I believe, it's another to, to move. So I'm getting a little off of, of the name of Jesus, but it's an interesting parallel that here they had the formula to say the name, but they didn't really have faith in Jesus. They just had belief in that formula. So we want to we want to take that as a warning. I'm putting these up here as warning. There's another warning in Matthew 10:42. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now I have two questions for you, and I don't have the answers. I, I, I probably could really dig in and find them. Maybe you have your own opinions. One is, are they saying that they are Christ, or are they saying that Jesus is the Christ? If you read that, uh, Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. So do we read that as they come saying, Jesus is Christ, and then deceive many? Or do they come saying that they are Christ? Now, I had always taken it that they would come saying, I'm Jesus. No, I'm Jesus. He's, no, he's over there. Jesus over there. But you could read that as they come in my name saying that I am the Christ, that Jesus is the Christ. So there could be people who are coming in the name of Christ saying Jesus is the Christ, and still deceive many. And maybe that's what we see today, is many are being deceived by non-doctrine, but people who will say Jesus is the Christ. Um, also, the word Christ is used here. So many still come in my name saying, I am Christ. Are they actually coming saying, I am 
the anointed one, which was what the word Christ means, or are they coming saying, I am Jesus? Because of the, the real text here says, I am Christ. But are they coming saying, now that now this is a different question. It may sound like the same question, but it's a little different question. One is, I'm the Messiah, nothing to do with Christ, or I am Jesus the Christ. So we've really got three choices there uh, as to what it means, and I think we probably could figure it out. But the worst case is that they come in Jesus' name, they say Jesus is the Christ, and they deceive many. So a warning, a warning, even if the person comes in Jesus' name, there's a warning. Another warning, yet another warning. Okay, we have a lot of warnings before we get to, to some good things. Matthew 7, 21 to 25. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That's why I brought this out. Is they prophesied in Jesus' name. And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Again, we get another picture of this belief versus faith. These people believed they're out teaching and building hospitals and casting out devils and wonderful works, and yet he didn't know them. So they had a belief, but they didn't have it really applied to their lives. They didn't have it as a faith, which, which they, uh, if you really believe the Lord, you will follow what he says. Uh, it's interesting, though, that they prophesied in his name. They did all of these things in his name. We could get, people could get, they see it on television, a televangelist, who is doing a miracle or faking a miracle, I don't know which, but whatever they're doing in Jesus' name, and they get faked by that, and, and they don't go to God's, they have this intermediary. God's word tells them what to do, the intermediary tells them something different, but that intermediate can deceive them because they do things in Jesus' name. So we have to be careful of that. So those are uh, some warnings about the name of the Lord, and uh, that doesn't mean we can't trust in the name of the Lord, it's just some warnings. So I want to show you a long-range effect of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is so powerful that this long-range effect still exists. Matthew 10, 42. I always loved this. I always remembered it when someone said this. And whosoever shall give to drink under one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Okay, so here's something that's doing something in the name of a disciple, not even in Jesus' name, just in a disciple. I do this in Ken, Kendall's name, <laughs> okay? And turning it down into, I give a nobody, one of these little ones, not even a named person, a little person, a little one, a little child or something, give a nobody something that's worth nothing, water, in the name of a nobody, because that person's just a disciple, not the, not the apostle, not named, just a disciple, uh, but it is a disciple of Jesus, still gets their reward for that act. So how far away is that? It's not a, you're not doing it to a great person, you're not giving a great thing, and you're doing it only in the name of a person in church. But even so, it's important. And that's just, imagine if you did it in Jesus' name to a very important person and gave a very important gift. You'll get your reward the same. But that's how, how God looks upon it as a, uh, in his name or attached to him. All right, now some, some uh, doctrinal parts of, of uh, the name in the New Testament, the name of God in the New Testament, Jesus. In John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will research, you'll receive. So Jesus is saying, I come in my Father's name. Now, his name, people knew what that meant. I had heard that many people um, named their child Jeho Jehoshua back then, hoping their child might be the Messiah. They, they knew that that was going to be the name. Remember, Joshua was a book of the Bible who led them out of, out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. Well, that was a type of God leading us out of sin into the, the 
uh, into new life. So he says, I've come in my father's name. They know where that name comes from. Yahweh has become salvation. So he, Jesus is saying, I come in my father's name. And that's exactly what he did. He came in Yahweh, or what they knew as the father, is become salvation. John 10, 25, Jesus answered them, and I told you, and you believe not, that the works I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. He did not do works in Jehovah or Yahweh's name. He did works, I am Jesus, and he did the works. So he was doing it in his father's name or in the father's name. John 17, 6, he's praying, and uh, people have a problem with praying, but the man is still a man. He's God, but he's man. The man praying, just as the man had to eat and sleep and die, bled, bled. the man prayed, I have manifest thy name. So he's talking to God. I've, I've manifested, I've shown forth your name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So again, talking to God, he's saying, I, I, I'm, I'm out here with the name Jesus manifesting your name to the people. So the name of the Father is Jesus, as, as we know it now in the New Testament. So uh, he's, he's said it three times there. We've established it. Now, talking to Jesus is talking to the Father. Okay, some people don't understand that. You know, they think, would Jesus, would you tell the Father this? There's, a, there's another verse, I don't have it in here. He, he says, you think you have to talk to me, and then I'll tell my Father. But it changed it around. And so in John 14, 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay, so if you take that verse alone, then you're asking something in Jesus' name, and Jesus is saying, I will do it. But Two chapters later, John says, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So which is it? Is Jesus going to do it or is the Father going to do it? Are you going to ask Jesus or are you going to ask the Father? Well, it's all the same, and he's teaching us that. But the main thing is, what is the same in those two verses? In my name. That's the key. Okay, so some people might be confused and pray to the Father that he'll do something, uh, but they need to study their Bible more and, and learn about God more, that uh, that's who they're talking to. So in my name is the key point that we pray. Now, um, again, some more doctrinal things. Life through his name. John 20, 31. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Okay, he could have just ended it with, you might have life. But he put through his name for, for a reason. His name is attached to these, these great deeds and salvation. Acts 2.21, uh, Peter is preaching, and, he shall, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, we're attaching the name again with salvation. So more than getting life, but actual salvation. And then, Acts 22, 16, further on, Paul's re rehearsing what had happened. And he said, Now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So there we see that calling on the name of the Lord, attached with washing away the sins, attaching with baptism, attaching with getting life, attaching uh, through uh, getting saved. And then if we go to Acts 2, 38, which ties it all together, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this whole purpose, this whole calling on the name of the Lord, ties back to baptism in Jesus' name. So baptism in Jesus' name is very, very important for salvation, for getting life, and uh, people need to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm going to uh, skip over. I would go right to baptism, but I got one more uh, sheet before baptism. Uh, miracles. Uh, in the name of Jesus. So in Acts 3 is one of the first miracles of the church time. Uh, and Peter and John came to a man who was crippled by the gate. And uh, they said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. They grabbed him and lifted him up and he walked and he ran in the temple and he gave glory to God and jumped and so on. Well, they got in trouble for that. Uh, 
So their answer to getting in trouble that is, uh, and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So they're not saying we did anything. They're saying in the name. But he notice that he asked, he said in his name through faith in his name. So he's, now he's not just said it's a formula, but faith also would, took part here. And so this, this person, uh, he, he's tying the miracle to the name of Jesus. Now, uh, the next chapter, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And I looked up power, and it's that, uh, that verb, dudamos. Dudamos is a power. Uh, and by what name is the Greek word for name, anama. And those are two words that are used here in the translation. Sometimes translations that we talked about last week, sometimes they don't translate a bunch of words to one or, or one to a bunch of words. Uh, but these two are, by what power did you do that? In other words, what, what kind of ability did you have to be able to make that guy walk? Or by what name have you done it? And they actually use the word name. So knowing that they could speak the name of Jesus and that could happen. So they got in trouble uh, and going down to Acts 4.29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by thy name of thy whole, by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Notice again, uh, we talked about last week that the spirit of God is like the breath of God. And sometimes if you throw that in, it, it really makes, uh, uh, makes it come alive. And they were all filled with the breath of God and they spake the word of God. So again, they were filled with the spirit and they began to speak. So again, you see that breath, that voice that comes out. But the point here is that they had prayed um, that signs and wonders would be done by they and then. And I just like this, I think it's the only place in the Bible it's called thy holy child Jesus. So they were, again, recognizing that it's the name of God's child. There's one and only. Adam kind of was God's child. He made him, but he actually begot Jesus. So he's the, God's only child, and his name is Jesus. So they, this, this happened. Um, there are, yeah, I got this down. And there are many that believe that uh, that if they believe Jesus existed and he was a teacher, that he was the son of God, that that's all they need to be saved. But faith is more than that. It's action, it's trust, and it's obedience. So, okay, now to baptism. Baptism in the name of Jesus. Couldn't miss this subject because we're talking about the name. Um, Matthew 28, 19, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, or because of that, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So that is a, not a plural. That is in the name. So we want to know what the name is. The best way to answer that question is let Scripture answer it. So again, going very quickly in time, a few few weeks later, Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So they answered the question. That's the simplest way for us to help people who are Trinitarian, is just to show them the way they answered the command was to baptize in Jesus. So if we take that backwards and we said Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Uh, so baptism in Jesus' name is, is important. We've already seen that it's tied to getting life and, and uh, uh, being saved. Number of places, Acts 8, 16, for he has fallen upon none of them. The Holy Ghost had not fallen upon them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 10, 48, you know all of these. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed to him to tarry many days, certain days. Uh, 19, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 22, 16, why tarryest thou? Arise, be baptized, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Every time, baptism tied to the Lord, uh, to, to the Lord's name. Colossians 3, 17, just to wrap that all up. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus 
giving thanks to God and Father by him. So whatever we do. It's funny. People will pray in Jesus' name. They'll take their food and pray in Jesus' name. They'll God bless you in, in Jesus' name at the end of church and so on. It comes to baptism, they won't use Jesus' name. I don't know why. don't know why. Hopefully that's changing. I, I think that's what we want. We could go fight them about it, but hopefully God will help it change. All right, since we're on baptism, it's part of being born again. Two scriptures. I just love these scriptures, so I'm kind of indulging myself. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay? There's two sentences there. One is that you're sanctified and washed. The other is you're justified in the name and justified in the Spirit. You see those kind of two sentences? It's, a lot of times the Bible has and or even to say the same thing a second time. Titus 3.5 also, not by works of righteousness, which you have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So we're talking about saving. The washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Again, another compound, two, two things happening. So born again is just another way of saying regeneration. Regeneration is another way of saying born again. Regenerate, restart. Genesis, the book, book of Genesis is the beginning. Read, begin. So born again is re-begin. Unfortunately, people believe that, oh, okay, I turn over a new leaf, I've, I've re-begun. Re That's not enough. God wants to convert us. So born of water, born of the Spirit. Baptized in Jesus' name, baptism of the Holy Ghost. From Corinthians, washed, sanctified. From Titus, uh, from Second Corinthians up there, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, justified in the spirit of our God. From Titus, washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. Those two columns, as I put them there, just say the story of regeneration over and over again. We could add on to that as we've done. They went through the cloud and they went through the sea in the Old Testament. They went to the altar of sacrifice, then they went to the labor, then they went to the approach of the spirit of God. In the, in the tabernacle. Many, many, many places. That's why uh, Nicodemus should have known the answer when Jesus said, he went directly, you must be born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. Nicodemus, you should know this. I've given you the holy scriptures to show that. All the scriptures for that there are, are, are on the list at the bottom. So born again in Jesus' name. It's all part of, you can't skip the name of Jesus. Now, one thing I did a little study on is the name of Jesus, not in the authority. So I wanted to look up the Greek words. Remember, in the New Testament, of so the Greek for the name versus the authority. Because some say it doesn't really matter because what it really means is authority. Or what it's saying is by the authority of Jesus. Not the name. It doesn't really matter about the name, but it's the authority. So I looked up authority in the New Testament. There were six different words from strong concordance that were translated into the English word authority. That was surprising. Six different words. And I put the numbers down to show you that they're uh, almost all starting with different first letters. That's why 1800, 2700. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Up a little bit there. Those are the numbers in Strong's concordance of the Greek words that are translated into authority. These English words are from the definitions from those verses. Um, jurisdiction. Who gave you the ju jurisdiction? To, to I have to have jurisdiction like a mark. <laughs> You're a, a sheriff. You can't go into penal colony and then author, uh, assert your jurisdiction. You're out of your jurisdiction. Uh, power. Who gave you the power to do that? Uh, who gave you the right, as kids would say? You ain't got the right to do that. Okay. Who gave you the strength? Who gave you the ability? Who gave you the privilege to do that? Who are you competent to do that? Uh, do you have the capacity to do that? Think of capacity as like to feed 5,000. Do you have the capacity to do that? Do you have the authority? Freedom. Do you have, you know, are you free to be able to do that? Do you have the mastery? Are you, uh, are you good at what you're doing? Do you wield, like wield power? Uh, more, more words for authority is huge, hard or grievous, superiority. Do you have the rank? People have been in the military. Do you have the rank to be able to order that or, or do those things, take a car or whatever? Excellency, dominate, 
usurp authority, forbid, charge, rebuke, all words that are used with these six words from strong, six Greek words talking about authority. And they were translated, that, again, remember we talked about sometimes you have one English word which came from six Greek words. Sometimes you have different English words, but they all came from the same word in Greek or in Hebrew. That happens all the time. Last week, I think we had one Hebrew word that was translated into multiple, yeah, breath, wind, spirit, but it was all the same word. And so we, we learned something by seeing that one word was translated in three different ways. It, taught, it could tie in the wind and the spirit and so on, which Jesus did later in the New Testament. This case here, we have six different Greek words that are translated into the word authority in the New Testament. Now, there is one Greek word translated into the name, uh, is onamo in Greek, and that's number 3686 in strong concordance. You could look it up, but there's only one word. Now, I, I, to be absolutely clear, there is one verse that translates call as name. He is called Paul. He is named Paul. The translators into English translated call into he is named Paul instead of he is called Paul. One verse, one, one place. But every other place, it's that same word, onamo, in the Greek, and never do they ever overlap. Never is authority translated as name or name translated as authority or any of those uh, uh, definitions of authority. So there is no possible way that anybody could say it doesn't matter about the name. It's just the authority of Jesus, the authority of God to be able to take your sins away and so on. It's by the name or you're, you're totally against scripture, 100%. Never crosses. And I, I was surprised. I was glad, but I was surprised. Never crosses. So the takeaway in the name of Jesus is never by the authority of Jesus. But when you pray in the name of Jesus, you get the authority of God. Okay. So one encompasses the other, but one doesn't replace the other. And now I'd like to finish, finish with praise to God. Uh, four scriptures of praise to his name. So Ephesians 1.21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. So no name now or in the next world will be higher than the name of Jesus. Philippians. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So there's no higher name than Jesus. Philippians, and at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Anything that you can think of. I wonder if the people in hell will have to bow. The devil will have to bow. The, all those demons will have to bow because he says under the earth. And finally, Hebrews 1.4 being made so much better than the angels, and he hath by inheritance, because he was born from God, obtained a more excellent name than they. So it's better than any name that uh, an angel has. So much higher. It's beyond that. So the great name of Jesus is something that we can cling to. We can use some warnings. Remember not to go crazy. Uh, and uh, in the New Testament, it's, it's very important, even though in the Old Testament they were learning what his name was. Now we, we have more than knowing what it is. He is giving us the authority, the authority, the ability to use his name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I guess since Brother Lopez is out there, uh, we'll dismiss. And thank you.